Pythagoras discovered that if you drew squares on the legs of a right triangle, that their areas equal the square drawn on the hypotenuse. This theory is demonstrated by cutting pieces out of the larger of the two leg squares, fitting them into the hypotenuse square, and adding in the smaller square. The Pythagorean theorem can be demonstrated with similar rectangles drawn on the sides of a right triangle. One has an area of 16, another an area of 9, and they add up to an area of 25. The problem with using rectangles is that without knowing one side, you have no way of knowing the other. That's why nobody uses rectangles for the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem can also be done using quarter circles on the sides of the right triangle. Since the area of a circle formula is pi r squared, you can divide by 4 to find a quarter circle. If you substitute in each radius, you can show that the Pythagorean theorem works with quarter circles as well. As you simplify and divide out the 4, you come up with a true statement, 9 pi plus 16 pi equals 25 pi. So it does work. One of the reasons we use the Pythagorean theorem is to work backwards and find the side length. In this case, we can find out what the radius was if we know that the area was 16 pi. But as you can see, it takes an awful lot of math to get our answer. In fact, this is pretty slow. When using the Pythagorean theorem with squares as it was intended, you're just finding the area of a square that has a side length of 5 and a side length of 12. You take those two areas and you add them together, and that gives you the area of the hypotenuse square. One simple backward step, taking the square root, will get you your answer. That's much faster. We use algebra to describe the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can rearrange it any way you need to, to find whichever leg or hypotenuse you might be missing.